Let's just have a look at Newton 1, 2, and 3 quickly. Newton 1. An object will remain at rest or continue to move at a constant velocity unless a resultant force acts upon it. In symbol form, we can say that F net equals zero. We know that F net actually equals MA, but when the acceleration is zero and A is zero, anything multiplied with zero gives you zero. So Newton 1 can be summarized as the law of inertia and F net <coughs> equaling zero. Newton's second law can be summarized by saying that F net equals MA. We know that if a resultant force acts upon an object, that object will move in the direction of the acceleration. We know that the force is going to be directly proportional to the acceleration and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. And then if you look at Newton's third law, the force that one object, let's say force that object A exerts on object B, is going to be equal in size but opposite in direction to the force that object B exerts on object A. And this is basically Newton 1, 2, and 3 summarized. Now, we need to know the theory. We need to know these laws of par half. But the difficult part comes in when we have to do calculations and figure out which law we need to use. So I have an example here from an old question paper that says a tow truck pulls along a car along a gravel road. The force applied by the engine of the tow truck is 9,000 Newton. The mass of the tow truck is 1,300 kilograms, and the mass of the car is 950 kilograms. The vehicles are connected to each other by an inelastic tow bar of negligible mass, and then they have given us this diagram where all of these values have already been inserted on the diagram. Now, the important part is here, just under our picture. The tow truck and the car move at a constant velocity, and it's even written in uppercase letters. That should be a clue to us as to which law we are going to use. So when we do Newton 1, 2, and 3 questions, you'll see in your exams that they are going to give you some hint as to which one of Newton's laws you have to use. Now, if there is movement at a constant velocity, it means that I am going to have to use Newton's first law at some point. Remember, if an object moves at constant velocity or is not moving, it will continue to do that. Then the first question says, draw a labeled free body diagram indicating all the forces acting on the tow truck. Now remember, we basically do two diagrams with this work. The one is the force diagram. A force diagram is where you, instead of drawing the object as you do here, you draw a little block, and then we show the forces acting on the block. A free body diagram is where we use a dot and just indicate all the forces acting on that dot, none of them pointing towards the dot. So that's a free body diagram. If I have to go and draw a free body diagram for all the forces acting on this tow truck, I'm just going to do it over here. I'm going to have my dot, and then because the tow truck is on a surface, I know that there will be a normal force, which I'm going to label as F subscript N acting on this truck. Also, I know that because the truck has mass, there's a force due to gravity. And those two are the obvious ones when you have any object that touches the surface. Then I also know that the engine is going to have an effect. I'm going to call this my force applied. That's my 9,000 Newton force. Then also I know that between the tow truck and the car, there has to be a force of tension. This force of tension is similar to Newton's third law, where we say that the force that the tow truck exerts on the car due to this cable is equal in size, but opposite in direction to the force of tension that the car exerts on the tow truck. And then, of course, also because I know that there is a, a surface and tires, there's going to be a force of friction. I'm going to call this force F subscript F for friction, but because we know that there is movement, you can also call it FK, which is F kinetic. And this is also going to count for five marks. As you can see, I have five forces.
the mark allocation gives you an idea of the amount of horses. But please don't go and add in extra stuff just so you can get to five. If you don't know, rather leave it out. If we look at the next question here, if the coefficient of kinetic friction between the tow truck tires and the road surface is 0 0.45, the value that they've given us here is the coefficient of friction, which we know is mu k, and it doesn't have a unit. They want us to calculate the magnitude of the tension in the tow bar. Now, if you look at this question, it's kind of weird that they are asking us to calculate tension in a tow bar, but they give us the force of friction. And if you were not sure what to do here, let's go and have a look at our free body diagram. As you can see, we have forces in the vertical and forces in the horizontal. Now, we know that the truck is not moving up and down, so we know the vertical forces are balanced, meaning that the net force there is zero. But what you had to see here was because the car and the tow truck are moving at a constant velocity, we know that the forces in the horizontal will also give us a net force equal to zero. That's the important part here. So we are going to use F net equaling zero in the horizontal as well. So if we go and now calculate this, we can say that in the horizontal, F net must equal zero, and then go and have a look at all of our forces in the horizontal. In the horizontal, we see we have FA, which is to the left, so I'm just going to make to the left positive, but you can assign a negative sign to the left as well. It doesn't matter. That sign just gives us direction. So I'm going to say to the left is positive, and this is going to give me 9,000 Newton minus tension minus the force of friction is equal to zero. Now, tension is my unknown, and I can't have two unknowns which means that I need to go and find more information about the force of friction. What they have given me is that the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.45. So if I go and look at my formula sheet, I also know that the force of friction is equal to mu k times Fn. So I can go and figure out what Fn is as well. And this is sometimes difficult because it's like we're solving a problem, but we're solving another problem inside a problem inside a problem. But don't get discouraged. We can go and look at our free body diagram to see if we can figure out what Fn is. And if I look at my free body diagram in the vertical, I can also say that F net equals zero. And if I take up as positive, Fn minus Fg has to be equal to zero. And I can go and figure out what Fg is because we now see that Fn is actually equal to Fg in size. So what is Fg? We know that Fg equals Mg. The mass of the tow truck was given as, let's just go and check, 1,300 kilograms. So we're going to have 1,300 times 9.8. That gives me 12,740 Newton. So if Fg equals Fn, I can now go and write down a value for Fn. Fn is going to be equal to 12740 Newton. Remember that Fn is upwards, so this is upwards. I can now go and substitute this value into my formula for friction. Ff equals mu k times Fn, where mu k was given as 0 0.45, and I multiply that with Fn. 1, 2, 7, 4, 0. And this is going to give me the following 5,733 Newton. Now I go back to my original formula. I'm just going to erase that calculation so we have some more space. 5,733 is now my value for FF. Let's go and substitute this into our formula. 9,000 minus FF, which is now 5733, is going to be equal to, and I take T to the opposite side, making it positive, 9000 minus 5733 gives me 3267 Newton. And now I've calculated the tension as well. So the magnitude of the tension 
Now, do you see that they didn't ask you for direction? They just asked you for size. So, tension will be equal to 3, 2, 6, 7 Newton, and that's my final answer for this question. The next question says, the coefficient of kinetic friction between the car tires and the road. So, if you have to go and calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction between the car tires and the road, we have to assume that there is something here that we don't have. You, you see what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm going to just do that on a, a separate page for us quickly. So what they're asking us here is coefficient of kinetic friction. And this is not going to be equal to 0, 0,45. It's going to have a different value. Okay? So if we go and calculate this mu k, what do we know about mu k? Mu k is part of this formula. Ff equals mu k times Fn. Yes? Okay. So if we go back to our question. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the car tires and the road. If we look at the car, we have the car's mass. So can we go and figure out what Fn's value will be? Yes. So let's go and do that. We can say that Fn is going to be equal to Fg for the car, same as previous example, Fn equals Fg, where the mass of the car was 950 kilograms, 950 times 9.8. This is going to give me 9,310. Yes, happy with that? Okay. Now, I've calculated Fn, and I know that if I have my force of friction, because I have Fn, I can then calculate mu k. I need to go and find out if I can calculate my force of friction first. So if I go back to my question here, we didn't draw a free body diagram for the car, as you can see. Can you see that? Let's just go and do that first. So for the car, we have, of course, up and down. Ooh, that's not really up, that's sideways. Up will be Fn, down will be Fg. Forward will be tension. And backwards will be force of friction. So here we see in the vertical balance, in the horizontal also balance. So can you see that tension must be equal to the force of friction? Yes? So we can go back to our um, screen here and say that the force of tension is going to be equal to the force of friction for the car, which we said was 3, 2, 6, 7 Newton. So now I can go and substitute this value into my formula. 3, 2, 6, 7 is equal to mu k times 9,310. So to get rid of the 9,310, I divide by it on both sides. And if I go and use my calculator, 3, 2, 6, 7 divided by 9,310 gives me 0, 0,35. Remember, no unit. It's important to remember that the kinetic coefficient of friction is not the same necessarily for all tires on a surface.